So class Trematoda. So this is going to be internal parasites, internal flatworms, and uh, we oft often call these flukes. So these are internal parasitic flatworms. So these are endoparasitic rather than exoparasitic. So because they live inside of other organisms pretty much their entire lives, their life cycles have become very specialized. And it, it, it not only affects animals, but it also affects humans as well, because humans are types of animals. Now, a lot of these will have at least one sucker on the interior end, which it uses to attach to its host. Um, one of the big things about trematodes is that uh, a lot of the members of this uh, class are actually uh, uh, culprits, uh, culprits for causing disease in humans. And so we do know a lot about a lot of the species in the class because we have to deal with them on a medical basis. So I'm going to start us off with talking about trematodes with talking about the subclass Digenians. Digenians actually have a very, very complicated reproductive uh, cycle. And it includes multiple hosts and it usually starts with a um, the, uh, well, it starts with some intermediary host and ends up with a definitive host, which is the final host. And during that time, there are usually multiple uh, different uh, free-living larva stages that occur in between some of the different hosts. It's, it's really weird. It is actually the most complicated life cycle in the animal kingdom that we know of. Um, it's, it's a whopper. It's, 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 it's kind of out of this world to think of, but it's, it's, it's also really neat and interesting. And here it is. Um, so on this slide, I've written it out in steps. On the next slide, it's actually in a diagram. So we start off with something called the myricidium, right? So this is the first larva that is that is that it hatches from the egg that is laid by the adult. So the adult's inside of its final host. It lays the eggs. It usually gets pushed out of the uh, of the host body, usually in the urine or the feces, and makes its way into water. Uh, once there, that egg will hatch, and that's where the myricidium comes from. And it's a free-swimming uh, uh, little larva um, that has cilia all over it, right? So little hairs, little bitty hairs all over it that helps it move through the water. That myricidium swims around in the water, and it finds its first intermediary host. In most cases, it's a snail. Snails just tend to get the short end of the stick when it comes to um, being host for other things. They, they host all kinds of stuff. So once the myricidium pierces into the snail, it loses its cilia, right? And then it develops into something called a sporocyst, which is a capsule that can now is going to start containing embryonic cells. So that myricidium is going to start dividing into different cells. Once that sporocyst starts to develop uh, into cells, we call each of those individual cells daughter sporocyst. So the, the myricidium goes into a snail, becomes a cyst. The cyst, and it's called a sporocyst, de uh, starts developing into individual cells, right? Starts dividing. Each one of those is called a daughter sporocyst. Eventually, those daughter sporocysts uh, will um, start to grow and develop into something called a sicariae. So the sicariae is a uh, where, the, where before we had the ciliated hairs all over the larva, now we have flagella on the larva. So the Ascaria is a flagellated larva. It's the second larval stage of the life cycle for diagenians. I know, right? It's pretty excited. All right, so, so with the myricidium, flagellated, swam out, got into a snail. It developed into a, a sporocyst. The sporocyst divided up into daughter sporocysts. Those daughter sporocysts divided up uh, even more so and became hundreds of uh, a sicariae. So the sicariae now are swimming around, uh, are going to leave the, the, the host and going to swim out into the um, into water. And it's going to move around until it finds a second intermediary host, which is oftentimes like an ant or fish or like a crab, something to that nature. And once it's inside the second host, once it uses a little flagella and gets to the second host, it becomes a metacariae. So the metacariae inside of that host just kind of hangs out, just kind of chills. Generally, some species will start driving that secondary host a little bit insane and make them act and behave differently so that way they'll get eaten 
and generally whatever eats them becomes the final host for the Mesocariae. So the uh, uh, the Mesocariaes are, are eaten by the definitive host and that's where they're going to grow to the adult. And the adults, when it's time to reproduce, the eggs are simply released um, and travel out of the final host uh, back into the uh, into a, some type of usually into water and the cycle completes itself. So again the Mesocariae Excuse me. The Mericidium uh, is a flagellated larva. Excuse me, is a ciliated larva, which uh, uh, will swim into the first intermediary host. Inside of the intermediary host, it becomes a sporocyst. The sporocyst divides into daughter sporocyst. The daughter sporocyst divides into hundreds of cicariae. Cicariae are a flagellated larva, which swims out of the first intermediary host and goes to the second intermediary host where it will uh, uh, essentially just become a metasicariae. The metasicariae drives the secondary host a little bit crazy, gets it eaten by the final host, and now once it's inside the final host, it will lodge itself in some place wherever it wants to be at home and uh, develop into the adult. And it has babies and the whole cycle starts again. So here is that same life cycle, but just shown as a, a little bit of a diagram. So you've got your, uh, your, your, your final host here, and inside of its poop are some eggs. Those eggs come out, uh, they'll develop into a flagellated uh, uh, um, myricidium. The myricidium usually ends up inside of a snail. It will develop into a sporocyst. The sporocyst will develop into daughter sporocyst. Each one of those will release uh, uh, multiple scariaes. The scariaes get eaten by the secondary host. Usually they'll start driving that guy mad as they develop into a metasicariae. The metasicariae will then simply get eaten by the, the final host, and there you have it. Now some people ask, well, how does a cow eat an ant? Well, the ant just crawls up on the blade of grass and gets eaten uh, when the cow eats the braid of uh, the eat, eats eats the grass essentially, and it'll end up inside of the cow, which will be the final host, and this is where it, the metasicariae will develop into the adult. I know it's complicated. Um, uh, we all realize that, but it's one of those things if you keep going over again in your head and look at the diagram and look at the other thing, you'll get the flow.